What is Kilo? Kilo is a lot of things. Kilo is actually too many things, and we don't have time for all that. So let's just pick one of these. Mm, maps? Maps are pretty important when it comes to Halo. I'd say maps are one of the main ingredients in the secret recipe that makes Halo so unique. But are you sure you wouldn't rather have all these other really fun topics? Things like sprinting or armor abilities? Why don't we talk about Battle Royale in Halo? That'd be really fun. Or can I pique your interest in the very important and significant topic of scoping in with an AR? No? All right, fine. Let's talk about maps. When it comes to what makes Halo Halo, I would say that maps are one of the strongest but maybe underappreciated pillars that hold Halo up, and their importance has been very clearly documented in the past, which is what I wanted to talk about. Halo 5 did a lot of things right, and a lot of things wrong, but when it comes to maps, Halo 5 was like sushi without soy sauce, a Dorito neglected from its dip, a dehydrated Oreo, solid gameplay without a solid map to flow it all together. If gameplay is the icing, maps would be the cake. And so a lot of people found Halo 5 sickly sweet and couldn't stomach it. Alright, fine, I'll stop with the food analogies for now. <laughs> Did Halo 5 have some good maps? Yes, absolutely. Some of my favorites, actually. But it also had this and this. Oops, I meant this. Halo 5's map problem. Halo 5 has a serious map problem, and it can't be repeated. It's not that Halo 5 only has bad maps. Like I said, I actually really love a lot of the maps Halo 5 brought to the table. The problem isn't bad maps, it's new maps or the lack of such. Let's take a look at all the Halo 5 arena maps. Okay, so what we've got here, excluding all Forge maps, Forge maps don't really count as much as a developer made map, even though I do absolutely love what people are able to accomplish with Forge. I'll get to that later. Regret is a remix of Truth, which was a remake of Heretic, which was a remake of Midship, but we'll count it. Stasis is a remix of Torque. Overgrowth is a remix of Plaza. Riptide is kind of a remix of Fathom. Empire is a remix of Eden, which leaves us with only a few unique maps, some of which are remix, and some are generally regarded as the bad maps that would have been vetoed in Halo 3. So we've got about six give or take maps that I believe are up to standards. And of all of these maps, they are built in a hyper competitive way. No vehicles, man cannons, or fun stuff. All very small competitive layouts. And to be honest, I don't hate them. Plaza and Colosseum are very strong maps, but when you compare it to all of Halo 3's greatest hits, it's really no contest. Well, that's just arena maps. What about BTB, you might say, if you've never played Halo 5 before. Let's dissect the BTB maps. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. What about Warzone? Warzone has decent enough maps, but there's a problem. Can you see it? How do you like this map? What about this one? Or this one? Nearly every Warzone map reuses the exact same armory assets, and these bases are where about 80% of the combat is done. I can't tell you how much of my life has been spent inside these exact walls. So you sort of feel like you're just playing the same environment over and over. Now before we get too comfortable as full-time game devs in our armchairs, I'm going to say something crazy. Asset reuse isn't just a good thing, it's actually 100% necessary when making a game of Halo skill. It's incredibly efficient and saves a hell of a lot of time, keeps the game size manageable, <laughs> and most importantly, allows for lots of content that would otherwise not have had the time to be made. For example, you could probably make two to three map remixes for the price of one completely new map. Side note, Overgrowth feels different enough from Plaza, and I'd say is a good example of a map remix done right. Even if Overgrowth isn't the most beloved map, the problem with reusing assets is when it's done wrong. If you solely rely on using the same assets initially created over and over, it can make the game go stale very, very quickly. I actually think this was Halo 5's biggest flaw. Not the campaign, not the abilities, not the competitive focus, but the lack of uniquely new experiences and the reuse of so many assets. As impressive as the Forge mode was in Halo 5, Forge maps just were never going to work as substitutes for real maps made with developer tools. What is this guy? Where'd he come from? I would say one of the main issues with the campaign was in fact recycling content. But why was Halo 5 like this? Was it an oversight? What caused so much recycling? And is Infinite headed the same way? 
I guess we'll never know the exact reasons why, but it's likely to do with rough development, and I have a hunch. Engine limitations. Halo's engine was never designed for the modern landscape of games. This is what gives Destiny such a headache as well. You've got to make lots of content and you've got to add it very, very fast to the game without it completely halting development because of too many bugs. If content was syrup, the Blam engine might have had a content pipeline the size of a paper straw. I lied when I said there wouldn't be any more food analogies. <laughs> So when they decided that Halo needed loot boxes, that was a huge problem. Not because loot boxes are predatory, but because loot boxes need loot. And Halo never really had loot. It had rewards like do the campaign on Legendary, and you'll get this helmet, one and done job. The difference with loot is that loot is a reoccurring reward you get for completing the same task. Halo had to turn rewards like helmets and skins into loot. It's not like they could give you a BR with different stat rolls, which means you've got to make 120 armors and helmets to make loot boxes last long enough. You'll find over a thousand wrecks at launch. You better believe you're getting this helmet with three different paint jobs. Reusing assets was the only feasible solution. So should we be worried about this problem returning to Halo Infinite? After all, it is a live service game. Well, part of the reason we've waited so long for Halo Infinite is because they've made a brand new engine for the game. I assume after Halo 5, they realized that Halo 5's engine wasn't able to carry their ambitions for Halo Infinite. And so the decision was made to make the Slip Space engine that has supposedly been designed from the ground up to be able to make content fast and add it live. So with a bit of luck, Halo Infinite won't have to cut so many corners. We've already got non-forged BTB maps confirmed, which is a good sign. And it also was confirmed to not have loot boxes, which saves that whole headache. It also looks like they refined how rewards work. Instead of one helmet with a bunch of variants, you get one helmet with interchangeable attachments and coatings, which is much smarter. Halo Infinite is going to have to walk that line carefully, the line that every live service game has had to walk. You've got to juggle two uncooperative forces, keeping people playing and keeping people paying. For example, if you give me a weapon that's really good to grind for, I will grind for it. But if you give me the option to fast track it with my money, that is now taking 80% of the fun out of the grind, knowing that you can just press the skip button. And if I just give in and begrudgingly buy the gun, not only does it remove the satisfaction I would have had otherwise earning it, but I've also just skipped over what would have been a good reason to play the game. Sacrificing player retention for money cannot end well. This video was initially just about avoiding the same mistakes Halo 5 made with its maps, but upon further inspection, it became a live service issue instead of a Halo 5 issue. And even with all the issues Halo 5 suffered, I still loved it enough to play all the way to Spartan rank 152. Halo's core is just too strong to be put out that easily, at least for me. So in conclusion, content recycling bad, reusing assets necessary, live service implementation tricky, Halo Infinite promising. 343 tends to not make the same mistakes twice. And so with Halo 4's multiplayer, Halo MCC's launch, and Halo 5's campaign, and live service, I think we're in a promising place for Halo Infinite. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I love doing these sit-down scripted videos that take a lot more effort than what I think a lot of people maybe realize. So if you did enjoy this, make sure you drop a like down below. Let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with me on every point that I made today. I really enjoy making this kind of stuff. So if you do want to see more, make sure you do support the video as it's a great sign for me. Also, if you're brand new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate it. But uh, that's all I got for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, catch you all in the next one. Bye.